A round of applause. Behind the prosperity of California's agriculture is the backbreaking efforts of migrant workers. Cesar Chavez himself worked in agriculture. He started at a young age, he helped his family, and moved out here to work in, in the fields because it was a better life. He was a quiet man, but he soon became a very strong leader. He wanted better wages, better working conditions for those that were out in the fields. He felt that everyone was being discriminated. The conditions were horrible. They were working under pesticides that were not FDA approved. Or if they were, they were causing birth defects and other different um, diseases. He later became an organized nationwide boycotts against growers to attempt to get these better wages and and other different things to help workers out there in the field that are picking our produce. <clears throat> First I will be going over why we chose him. Second Eva will be discussing the significance of his speech and communication concepts. And last but not least Sarah will be going over the speaker's ability to inspire. So this brings me to who is Cesar Chavez and why did we pick him? The story of Cesar, Cesar Estrada Chavez starts March 31st, 1927. He learned about injustice and justice at a very early age. He grew up in Arizona and he grew up in a small adobe home. His father made an agreement with Angloids there and their agreement was that the father would clear up 80 acres of land. And in return, the father would get a deed of 40 acres of land. So that was a pretty good, um, I would say that was pretty good. But the thing is, they actually, they didn't pay him for what he did. They didn't pay him at all. He didn't get anything. So that there gave Cesar Chavez the thoughts and want, thoughts and just, he was disappointed in other people. So he wanted to do something for his people because he felt that they were being discriminated, they weren't being respected. They're hard workers and they weren't getting what they were, what they should receive in return. He joined the Navy when, in 1944 when he was 17. He said that was the most horrifying time of his life, but he served our country. He did two years there and he, he he's very, Proud American, Mexican American, let's put it that way. With that, I'm going to go ahead and let Eva talk about the reason, the significance of his speech and communication concepts. Now I will explain the significance of speech and communication concepts. Who was Cesar Chavez as a speaker? Cesar Chavez was a very persuasive speaker. For those who felt empowered and motivated to do more than what they thought they could do to achieve, achieve and accomplish the things that they thought they couldn't do. Cesar Chavez quoting, once social changes begins, it cannot be reversed. You cannot uneducate the person who has learned to read. You cannot humiliate the person who feels pride. You cannot oppress the people who are not afraid anymore. We have seen the future and the future is ours, Cesar Chavez quoted. He also stated that violence wasn't the way to get what we wanted. It was to make our voice be heard and that and and make our voice by making our voice be heard gaining what we want. Quoting, not violence is not in action, it is not discussion, it is not for the timid or weak. Nonviolence is hard work. It is the willingness to sacrifice. It is the patience to win. As well, Cesar Chavez also used audio analysis, explaining that those who only speak Spanish feel this accomplishment. Quoting, our language is the reflection of ourselves. A language is an exact reflection of the character and growth of its speaker. Using these three codes, it shows how Cesar Chavez was also a persuasive speaker. Very, very motivated person as well. Now I'm leaving you with these three codes showing the significance of speech and communication concepts. 
I will now leave you with Sarah explaining why Cesar Chavez inspired us. Why did he inspire us? Cesar Chavez gave farm workers um, the voice they didn't have since they were minority. He also paved the way for those of minority regardless of the consequences. He inspired us to look ahead, to not conform with ourselves with what or where, with what or where we were, what we had, but also to seek prosperity and abundance. Um, not only has he been a motivation to us, the people and the people around us, but also to our President Barack Obama. President Obama stated in an LA Times, that's why I support the call to make Caesar's birthday a national holiday. It's time to recognize the contributions of this American, American icon to the ongoing efforts to perfect our union. Um, Cesar was, a, was in a Senate in Senator Robert, Robert F. Kennedy's words, one of the heroic figures of our time, he led the historic nonviolent movement for farm workers, right, and, dedica and dedicated himself to building a movement of poor working people. That extended beyond the fields and into cities and towns across the nation. Caesar inspired millions, millions to commit themselves and social to social, economic, and civil rights activism, and is and is a new role model, and is a role model for generations to come. As a review of what I, of what we have said, I will discuss with you the information we have shared. First, Dora went over the reasons why we picked him, and that was because he became a heroic figure for the Latin community. Second, Ava reviewed the, the um, importance of his speech and the communication concepts. And third, I talked about the reasons why he inspired us. And I would like to leave you off with one of um, Cesar Chavez's quotes, which is, "You are never too you are never strong enough that you lo that you don't need help." And uh, or the picture we passed around, we decided to pass it around because they have like, a lot of detail. It, uh, you can see on the sides, you can see people with signs when they were like on strike. And then on the other side, you can see the bodies of all the people that died um, doing the farm working when they were out in the hot sun. Up in the sky, I don't know if you can see the crosses. That also means the, the people that died that sacrificed their, themselves for better life. I wanted to go over these two pictures here. He said, puede means yes we can, or yes I can. He was a very, he wanted to get the point across that just because where you are or what you, family you grew up in, you didn't have to conform yourself to what life you had there. You could do it. He motivated the Latin community to get up, get out there, Learn English, get an education, do something other than just be a Latin, you know, a Mexican that just talks Spanish and doesn't understand English when they're spoken to. I really like this symbol here. I didn't know exactly what it meant, but in 1962, when Cesar founded the National Farmers uh, Association, he wanted something that symbolized courage, something for bravery, and the Aztec eagle is one of the things he found that would help them and give them that motivation and make them feel that they had some type of dignity. And I think that's very powerful. I, the eagle is, if you know the history of the eagle, it's pretty awesome. And like you said, it even inspired Barack Obama. He actually has a lot of, he's done a lot of speeches on Si Se Puede. He's still trying to motivate people and keep his word alive. And that's pretty pretty inspirational. Thank you.